wife cheated on me with her boss, humiliated and disrespected me to please him, so I collected my evidence and divorced her. Now she wants to reconcile because I'm the love of her life. Me am 32, wife F28. I have been with my wife for seven years. At first, it was great. She was my sole mate, and I was hers. We had smaller interests in sports, entertainment, social issues more on that later, holiday destinations, etc. We were happy for years. However, things started to change when my wife was becoming more distant, even slightly colder. Now let me give you some insight. We have been together for seven years. For five years, it was, as I said, happy. I felt I was her world as she was mine. We went out with friends, and I see her always smiling at me when we talked to our friends. She would take care of me when I was sick, as I did with her. She would back me whenever needed. She was my rock. My best friend. My one and only. We would do many things together, like hiking, camping, wildlife resorts same interests, and going to watch the football. We had a passion for each other. I never wanted her to change. When I first met her, she was beautiful. Brunette curly hair, stunning smile, and so nice. She always implied the same with me. She made me feel special. Not once did she make me feel inadequate or insecure about myself more on that later. As I said for over five years, it was great. But things started to change when her new supervisor started at her work. I'm calling him Margis 30. Now at first she would come home and talk about Margis. She would say that he's funny and makes people feel good. Of course I was slightly taken aback at first because she would usually come home and ask about my day and hers. But she immediately talked about Margis. However, at the time I brushed it off as someone who is new. As in her work she sees the same faces for years. So when Margis showed up, it was refreshing. Weeks pass, and my wife seems to be more distant and secretive. She would go out to work nights, which didn't bother me as she went on plenty before. However, we were meant to go out to a mutual friend's house for drinks. He is in a bad way, as he has been diagnosed with a disease that is severe. My wife, as I said, is a rock usually. Really empathetic and supportive. So when we found out about our friend Daniel 32, we didn't hesitate to go over and show our support. The night came to go over, and my wife was running late from work night out. I called her a few times and got no answer. I texted her, no answer. After waiting, I decided to go to Daniel's myself. Daniel, and I talked about how he's adapting and coping. During that time, I felt for Daniel. Such a nice guy to have this is cruel. Afterwards, I got home, and I'm seeing Fang. My wife is still not home. No missed calls or texts. Seriously? I couldn't believe it. I was getting worried if she'd been in an accident. So I called her work colleague Jane 28. I get on with Jane and ask her if Kelly my wife is out with her. Jane said that she is, but Jane went home, and it was just her and Margis left out. I was angry. So angry. We have known Daniel for years, and she would skip meeting our friend over a guy she just met. I kept telling myself there is an explanation for this. I waited until she got home. Eventually she arrived home and saw me in the living room looking at her. What's wrong? Everything okay? I looked her in bemusement and said, Daniel. She looked mortified. I'm sorry, I forgot. I was out with work friends and lost track of time. She looked sincere. Her and Daniel are good friends, so maybe she did forget. I did ask her a question. Who was out with you? She replied. Usual Jane, Sophie 30, etc. I replied, not Margis. Oh yes, he was there. I pressed on, remembering what Jane said. Did everyone stay out until the end? She replied, yes, it was a good night. The next day I'm angry. I don't say anything to my wife, but she has never lied to me before. She has never let anyone down before. I couldn't grasp that she would bail on our sick friend for a guy she just met. The next few days, my wife was becoming more distant. She would come home later and not be affectionate towards me. I still put this down to workload, maybe. But when she got home, she would be on her phone constantly. I asked her, who is it that you're always texting? Just a friend from work, she said. I asked her, is it Margis? No, she said. But what's the problem if it is? I never seen my wife get defensive like this, but I was going to be honest. I replied, because you never shut up about him. He's been working with you for under a month, and you seem to idolize him. Your face sparkled when you talked about him. So much so you forgot about Daniel. I could tell I hit the spot. She replied, No, I do not idolize Margis. He's nice but just a friend. And I apologized to Daniel already. This wasn't enough. I waited until she was asleep and checked her phone. And surprise, it was full of SXT messages between them. 
I took photos of the conversation for later. A week has passed, and it's still continuing. The late nights. The lack of affection. I spoke to a friend about my concerns, and he said maybe I'm being paranoid. Try to do something new, like make her a surprise dinner. I like that idea. So I texted my wife and asked if she's busy after work. She replied, no, I'm free. It seemed to be a nice text conversation. So I made dinner. Got a nice bottle of wine and flowers. She got home and looked sad at me. She said, she's really sorry. But a friend from work is organizing a surprise birthday party for a colleague. And that night is the only night they have. I shook my head in frustration and anger. She literally left right after and drove off. This was it. After months of suspicion, I needed proof. I know you must read this and say to yourselves, Friend, can you not see the signs? I could. But I was hoping. Hoping that I'm wrong. Hoping that it was a bad dream. The truth is, I was scared to find out. But I had to. I needed proof. So I wasn't proud of it. I put a tracker in her car. I pretended to be at work late. So she didn't see me when she got home. She did arrive home I watched from a distance. And she set off again in her car. I followed her as she went further out of town. She eventually pulled into a car park that was secluded in the corner. She was waiting until another pulled up next to her. It was him, Margis. She got out and got into his car. It was obvious what they were doing. I recorded her getting into his car for evidence against her. For the next few days, she acted like everything was fine. I mean, I know that she doesn't realize I know, but she was acting like normal. Smiling to me, even holding my hand at breakfast. She left to go to work. I had a day off and decided to snoop on the laptop to see anything suspicious. There was nothing. But when I was looking through her drawers I know, not my proudest moment, I saw an iPad under her bottom drawer. It wasn't mine, so I assumed my wife bought it. Luckily for me, it didn't need a password. I don't know if she forgot to lock it. But I got lucky. I got in and looked. Now this is where the damage really hurt. I looked in the iPad and checked to see text conversations, but nothing. However, what I was about to see I will never ever forget. There was a folder of pictures of my wife naked, making sexual positions for him. There were so many. But there was more. There were videos. I know I shouldn't have looked at them, but I did. The videos were graphic. Margis is sleeping with my wife, and my wife is enjoying it. But that's not all. My wife was seen sleeping with another woman, and another man with Margis there. But the other man was someone who really made me sick. He is a bigot. He had vile tattoos of certain groups who are vile. Like I said, a vile human being. It seemed that Margis agreed with his views, which was fitting. I couldn't believe it. My wife was with a man who held bigoted views. This was a woman who detested any form of bigotry, as did I. So why would she do this? What did she see in him? It was seeing her being fully complicit that really got to me. During our marriage, we always talked about fantasies, but never acted on them. As a man, it was threesome, etc. But my wife said she would never do it. Never sleep with another woman or do anything that makes her feel uncomfortable. I accepted that without a second thought. It didn't bother me that she didn't want to do it. I loved her. So to see her doing things that she never did with me hurt. Hurt really bad. I watched all the videos I know I'm stupid. I copied the videos and pictures to my laptop for evidence of infidelity. Because that's all that matters. I want her gone. I just don't know why she did it. I don't know why she refused me the fantasy route, if you will. What made him so special? Why was she into a man that I thought she despised because of what he represented? Anyway, I spoke to Daniel about everything. He is a great man and friend. He couldn't believe I was talking about my wife. He was disgusted with her, but noticed her change as well. I told him that I wanted to divorce her. He understood. He said I have enough to back me. He told me that confronting her and him is pointless because she has already made up her mind. He said that I need a fresh start and to find someone who is themselves and not a mirage of a woman I married, like myself. Daniel hates vile racists and shook his head that my wife did this Daniel has known my wife a lot longer than me. After speaking to Daniel, it made me feel like I was in control. For months I felt that she was in control. I was afraid to find out the truth. I didn't confront her more sternly when I was suspicious because I was afraid of the outcome. At the time, I didn't know if I wanted to leave her or make it work. But after the videos, pictures, and texts, I damn well know what I must do. I went to the lawyer to file for divorce. I had enough. My wife was still acting normal. Still on the phone constantly. Still going out late, I assume with him. I didn't care. I had to wait three weeks for the papers to come through. I got them. 
I decided to move out. Luckily we rented, and our lease was running out in three months. I was prepared to pay until then. Anyway, I wanted to move out. So the day came. She went to work. I made up that I had to go in later to cover for being short-staffed. She shrugged and said okay. No goodbye hug or kiss. Still, that hasn't happened for months, so I was used to it. She left. I packed up my essentials and put the divorce papers on the kitchen table along with my wedding ring. That was it. I stayed with my friend from University Adam, who lived in another city. I was grateful, but more grateful that it was far from her, the city, and our same social circle. I wanted nothing to do with any of it. I told my parents about what happened, and they were shocked but fully understood. I obviously didn't tell them every little detail. There was no need. All I can think of at the moment is that I'm free. My wife would, I assume, agree, as it was clear that Marges is the one she wants. I hope that we get a quick divorce. I really do. Later that night, my phone was blowing up with calls and texts. It was my wife. I was surprised because I honestly thought that this was what she wanted as well. But it seems that I couldn't be more wrong. I didn't speak to my wife. I had no interest in it. I read her messages, and all of them consisted of, I'm sorry, I love you, please, please, can we talk, etc. This lasted for hours. I blocked her number and deleted all my social media accounts. I spoke to my lawyer about my wife signing the divorce, but she hasn't signed. She did contact me through email. I wanted to have some way of communicating because I still want the divorce. She sent me an email again saying sorry a number of times and that we needed to talk. I replied no. All I want is the divorce. She replied that she doesn't want one. I am the man she only loves, and Marges meant nothing. It's funny because I never mentioned to her why I left, but she obviously knows why. Her guilt was conscious, and seeing her plea for forgiveness was actually satisfying. I spoke to Adam, and he said I could stay as long as I wanted. I am thankful for him. But he did say that I would have to meet her eventually. He said that I left without having answers, and no matter how hard you try, eventually you will need to hear them. Inside, I was disagreeing with Adam. Why should I talk to her? Why? She gave little regard to my feelings for months. She didn't care about me. She cares about her sick friend Daniel. She didn't care. So why would I talk to her? I know that deep down I'm being stubborn, but also angry that my wife is trying to reconcile. I honestly thought she would have signed and moved on with him. This has me mixed up. And even more mixed up now is that my wife wants to meet. I have a therapist who is excellent. I talked about the affair. The pictures. The videos. All of it. I mentioned that my wife wants to meet up before she signs. My therapist was blunt. She said that when I left without telling her why, deep down you wanted her to plead and her to worry. You keep telling yourself she wouldn't care, but deep down, you want her to care. You want her to feel pain, like she did to you. However, meeting her would take some of your control. She was right. She added that if you decide to meet in person, you must ask the difficult questions, even if you don't like the answer. Because you do have questions, and you are not moving on at all. You are running away because you are scared that the last seven years were a lie. Like I said, blunt. That was two days ago. My wife really wants to meet, and is inclined that she won't sign without meeting first. I speak to my parents and close friends about it. My dad said that you could force the issue of her signing, but that could take months. But if she's willing no guarantee to sign after you talk, then it's worth it. Adam agreed. I decided to meet my wife. Although to say I'm nervous is an understatement. How should I approach this? What should I ask her? Should I be open or guarded? Any help and advice would be grateful. We'll update after. TLDR. Married seven years. The wife had an affair with her supervisor. She became a totally different person. The wife wants to talk about what happened. Update. Update from wife, had an affair. I'm sorry that my update has taken longer than I liked, as I was going to post next day. Unfortunately, circumstances got in the way. But before I do, I want to thank everyone who posted their feedback. I read every single one, and I took everyone's advice on board. I was overwhelmed, to be honest. I really appreciate it. I also would like to point out some things regarding my previous post. The story was set just over a year ago. The last post is a catch-up to present time. Sorry, I should have clarified. So now this update leads up to the present day. As the story is now complete, I'll section each story with an update heading. Update, I don't know where to start. A lot of gas happened since I posted. First, I moved back to where I lived. Living with Adam was great, but I needed to go back eventually. My soon-to-be ex is still in our house, 
so I rented a flat just outside of town. I told my wife that I'm coming back, and she was happy. However, I told her under no certain terms that I would be living with her. So understood. Although she tried the generic, we can sleep in separate rooms line. No, I do not want that. I also stated that I would not tell her where I live, obviously, even though she tried to find out. She still wants to meet, as do I. We arranged a time and place. The place was a neutral venue, so to speak. It was near the beach where there are people, but not too many in case a scene is happening which I obviously don't want. I want to meet outside with just me and her. I know some of you in the comments said take a friend, but I felt that it wasn't needed. But still, I appreciate the advice. I do, however, agree that I will definitely be recording the conversation, which I did. Before the meet, I emailed my soon-to-be ex and laid down some ground rules, and if she didn't abide by them, there would be no chance of reconciliation. The rules were simple. Answer every question that I have honestly. 2. No deflection answers like, it just happened, or, I'm not sure, etc. I want detailed answers. If she storms off without answering every question, it's over. No reconciliation. Answer, even if you think the answer will hurt me. Don't be late. If you are, no reconciliation, so we made the place in time. Now it's about waiting until I leave to go home to my flat. The next day I catch up with other friends. They treat me like I'm Daniel, although I get it. I get the hugs and support, which I appreciated. But it seems inevitably that our breakup has spread. Although I question, how do they know? I only told a handful of people. But my wife inevitably told her family and friends and of course the domino effect would happen. However, they obviously didn't know the full details. They didn't know about the texts, pictures, and videos. Not even my wife knows that I have them. She is under the impression I left because she was spending too much time with Margis. She doesn't know about what I have. All she thinks is time with Margis. Her husband got upset. She broke it off. I told my therapist about the meeting. She said that I should ask certain questions to give her better insight into what happened. I'll explain that later. It's the day of the meet. I was nervous before, but my goodness, I am in bits. Not because I want her back, but because I love seeing her. And then seeing her means seeing him in my mind. And then I would lose focus and control. Update. I drive up to the beach early. Really early. I take in the surroundings, and in reflection, it was a perfect day. Sun was out. People were taking their morning stroll. I picked a nice venue. Then, out of nowhere. I turned to see my soon-to-be ex walking towards me. She was smiling. She looked great. Definitely glammed up. Although she looked slightly worn out and stressed no sympathy. She approached and tried to hug me. I put my arm out as to say no. She looked at me in an I understand kind of way. We sat down and settled. She tried to start small talk. But I wasn't interested. I had my phone on record and started. Me. When did you first kiss him? Her. The first week on the Friday. Me. When did you first sleep with him? Her. The same day on Friday. Me. Where? Her. At his place. Me. Did you ever do it on my bed? Her. Does it matter? I looked at her and said about the email. Answer everything I stated. Her. Yes. She starts to tear up. Me. When? She basically said it was a number of times I was out. Our neighbors saw him, but rightly thought he was a work colleague. They thought nothing of it. She apologized already and kept apologizing. But I put my hand out for her to stop. I asked my other questions. Me. Did you tell him about me? About you being married? Her. Yes. But at the time it was a blur. Now my therapist asked me to ask her a specific question. This was it. Me. When you first met Margis, how early was it that he talked about me? Her. What do you mean? Me. It's simple. When you talked, what did he ask you about me? Did he want to know how long we were married? Were we happy? Her, after a pause. Yes, he did ask about our marriage, and if we were happy. Why? Me. Didn't that strike you as odd? You met a guy you barely know, and he's asking personal questions about our marriage. Her. No, I think he was just being generally curious. I didn't think of it as being weird. More of this question relevance later after asking a number of small hidden questions. I decided to go for the big ones. I decided to ask her about the videos and pictures. However, I did it in a nonchalant way. I referenced a racist attack near us at a local store. Of course, if you read my first story, you will know about the views of Margis and his friend. So I went soft and turned it like this. Me? 
Did you hear about the incident last Thursday? Her. What incident? Me. The bigots who attacked the shopkeeper and trashed his store. Not before spraying hateful graffiti everywhere? Her. That's awful. Me? Yep, it is. I can't stand racists. Can you? She looked at me with a confused expression. I didn't say anything. Then it seemed to grasp exactly what I meant. She knew that I knew about the pictures and videos. She started to cry again. This lasted for about five minutes. I pressed. Me. Why would you even go near men like that? Her. She's red-faced from crying. Trying to compose herself. It's not what it looks like or what you think. Me. What do I think? What am I supposed to think? What was it about this man that would make you disrespect your grandfathers in WW2? Or bail out on your friends? And treat me like I'm a piece of crap? At this point, she was shaking. She looked at me watery-eyed but answered. Her. He was the new boss in our department. He was open and funny. He made people feel good about themselves. A lot of women liked him. Even after starting, he had it. But when he started to take an interest in me, I felt like he chose me. Me. What the hell does that mean? Her. You want honesty, and I need to be honest. When we started talking, he made it clear that he was only interested in me. I interrupted and said after a couple of days, Yes, that's what I'm saying. He had a way immediately to make someone happy and even more. I felt great when I saw him looking at me from across the office room. I felt great when he spoke to me, saying, You're the only interesting person here. Like I said, I felt he chose me me. Me? What? Her. I know it's pathetic. I'm pathetic and weak. But you have to understand what it was like. When he first started at the office, he was good-looking, confident, suave, and just right. He had an aura about him that when he smiled, I melted. She continued. He could have had anyone at the office at the time. All the girls wanted him. They all talked about him constantly. I know it sounds bad, but I never thought he would pick me. Me. Wait. You wanted to be picked. Her. No, not initially. I figured it would be a harmless flirt or something. But he made it clear that he wanted more than that. And that was it. Me. What was it? Him as being a kind of drug that I couldn't shake off. Again, I know it's pathetic, but give me a second. When he talked to me and gave me compliments, I was stunned but really flattered. My confidence went from 60 to 1,000. I thought to myself this man could have anyone. But he told me it was me he chose constantly. That he could tell it was me. Me. What was you? I don't get it. Her. He made me feel that I was the one. I was the one that he was meant to be with. I know it's not what you want to hear, but I'm being honest. Continue, I said. I can't deny I was attracted to him. It was obvious. I see that now. Me. Wait, you thought you were hiding it well, her. At the time, yes. At the beginning, he flooded me with compliments. Other girls were jealous of me. I got a rush from it. I liked it. The more I saw of him, the more I wanted. Her. Wanted to feel like a queen. I know that you treated me so well. I was lucky. But Margis at the time was just another level. I got a buzz from seeing jealous women being envious of me. I did ask for honesty. She continued. In my view, I thought to myself, I'm so lucky to have this man. But the longer I was with him, the more he changed. But I couldn't stop it. I asked her what she meant. He was specific in what he wanted. He got to know me. But unconditionally he got me to do the opposite of what I liked. Those videos and pictures were his idea. And yes, I know his friend and his ideology. But I didn't want to challenge him or Margis because I didn't want to upset him. He had a way of saying that if you can't make me happy, someone else will. He had this, do you know how lucky you are attitude. At the time I panicked, I went to extreme lengths to keep him happy. I wanted to make him happy, and nothing else mattered. So at the time I did anything for him you obviously saw that. I told her, of course I did, and about the fantasies. I know. I know. I know. But as I said, he was a drug that I couldn't shake off. The more I saw him, the more I wanted. He made me believe that you were the bad guy. He made me believe that you were holding me back, and that you didn't respect me. I know it's not true she was in tears again, but that's why I did everything. Everything he told me to do. Even after he was criticizing you, I couldn't fight back because I was hooked. Me. And that makes it okay. With how you treated me? Bailing on diner. Bailing on camping. Seriously. Her. No, I'm not asking for forgiveness. I don't deserve it because I know how I treated you. I was a nasty bee to you, and I will never forgive myself. 
but I did it bailing on diner, etc. I knew I was hurting you, but I couldn't stop. He kept telling me that I deserve more than you, and that I should be treated like a queen. So the more I went out to high-class restaurants, VIP theater shows, and fancy jewelry, the more I resent you. But each time he did it, he always mentioned you and your failure. So I obviously bought into it, and that's why I was cold towards you. I thought you failed me, and he didn't. I know it's not true. But during that time he was influential, and I believed everything he said, she continues. It was only when I saw the papers and ring that something clicked in me. I know you don't believe me, but I finished with Marge's straight away. I know I don't deserve credit for it, but I really am ashamed of what happened. I can't imagine what it was like for you. I know I neglected you and made you feel worthless, but I couldn't see it before. I do after I see the papers. I'm ashamed that I took this vile man over you. I looked at her. I didn't expect her answers, but she seemed well sincere. I replied though. Aside from your affair, you know what the problem is? That at the beginning you wanted the affair because you said he chose you. You said he was a drug, but millions of people get themselves out of drugs. They realize that they have problems and get help. You didn't. You carried on. The only reason you are here is because I am your safety net. And now it's gone. There is no way a spouse can say I love you when you make them feel inadequate. She claims she didn't. No, you did. For eleven months, you made me feel worthless. As you know, I was eating, becoming more reclusive, and losing myself. All the while you were going out every night. Going to the gym. Buying new clothes. Being a different person. You came home and looked at me with disgust. During that time, you didn't let me touch you or anything. You didn't give me anything but abuse. Her. Abuse? Yes. You did abuse me mentally. Maybe you didn't think you were doing it, but damn, you did it. My best friend and soulmate made me hate myself. She's in tears again. It got that bad I was thinking of. I didn't say it, but you get the picture. At this point she is crying heavily and apologizing so much that I forgot we were at the beachfront. People were watching, and I had to tell her to breathe. She got her composure back and kept pleading it was him feeding her the toxic thoughts against me. I did have one last question. Me? Do you love him? I know that you won't believe me, but I actually hate him. As much as I hate myself. After a few hours of talking, she left. Saying everything was true. I was the love of her life, etc. I sat by the beach, thinking. Thinking about the possibility of her being groomed, conditioned, etc. I mean, it makes sense. After she met him, she changed like totally. There was a reason why my therapist wanted to ask that question. Although she can't diagnose Marges. She thinks he has sociopathic tendencies. Hence why he asked about our marriage, she said. It's clear that he had an agenda asking about your marriage to your wife so early. The signs are there. He did choose your wife. He knew that you were happily married and solid. So he had his new challenge. The challenge was simply to cause a breakup and ruin lives as sociopathic people do. Margis would never have been with a single girl because there was no challenge. But with my wife, it wasn't just her, he was controlling but me as well her friends and family. He turned her into everything your wife is against and made sure she did. He turned you through your wife into a depressed loner, she continued. That's why you never confronted her after the texts and videos. You didn't have the confidence at all. That's what he and your wife did. He pulled the strings, but my wife willingly played along. Sociopaths like to manipulate and control the narrative. When you followed your wife to the parking lot, he probably knew you would follow your wife. If you confronted them there, most likely your wife would take his side there and then. Thus, he would have won. People who have sociopathic tendencies have no empathy. They are driven by seeing others suffer by their hand. Is there some truth to that? My wife a victim of a sociopath? It fits, but a part of me doesn't care. Well, part of me cares fully at times. Who was this guy, I keep telling myself. I never seen one man come in with such authority and ruin people's lives. But deep down, he was the package. He was a boss making decent money. He was 30, but looked 21, had great physique, and had confidence. That would make women turn, right? But maybe my soon-to-be ex was right in that she finished with him that day I left. Because after I left, my neighbor said to me that Marges kept coming round to my house demanding to talk to my soon-to-be ex. He apparently did this a number of times, as my wife said when we met. He was acting like the physically abusive husband. My therapist said sociopaths cannot accept rejection especially when they don't have control. My wife dumped him, and he became erratic. Why? My therapist said it was simple. Your wife chose you over him lucky me. He manipulated her for under a year, and she still had the strength to finish it. 
That undoubtedly derailed his plans. Update. I contacted HR about my wife and him. It turns out other people contacted HR as well. It seems that the affair news spread. He left shortly after me and my wife spoke. I don't know where. I don't care. My wife also left before she was pushed. Apparently people are not too happy with her and her behavior, especially her parents. She is staying with her parents and relocating. She is getting help with a psychologist, though, which she definitely needs. I still speak to her family and our friends. They try to say that I should meet my soon-to-be ex again. But that's not happening. She needs to concentrate on herself getting better. As her family said, M did a huge number on her. The divorce will be finalized in a few weeks. I know some people said she wouldn't sign after the meeting. But I had to go. I had to know why she did it. I had to know. Do I feel better? In a way, yes. My wife was as honest as she can be, I think. The pattern of the affair makes sense. My soon-to-be ex asked if there is a chance for reconciliation eventually. I have to admit, I thought about it. Even if she is a victim of a master manipulator, how can I trust her? If I took her back, all I would be thinking about is him and how I cannot measure up compared to him. I would feel second best no matter what. She assures me that it's not the case. That I have always been her soul mate. Even after she said it, my life with her wouldn't be the same. I suppose the moral of the story is that cheating is obviously wrong. It affects and damages the partners more so. Cheaters are truly selfish. They only own up if they're caught or leaving divorce papers on the kitchen desk. I certainly won't marry again. The damage of the affair has hurt me deeply. I still feel inadequate about myself, that I'm not good enough. Although I have been going to the gym again. Hiking and camping with friends. I've been trying to stay active. Trying to move on. But I do have this hate. Hate my SDBX for easily falling for him. And him choosing my wife. Why did it have to be her? I keep telling myself. But these questions I ask myself are pointless because it's done now. The damage has been done. And it still hurts. I still have my job. And moving to the outskirts of the town is good. I'm not one of those people who move thousands of miles away. Although I get it. But my work and social circle have been good to me, and I don't want to lose them. If I relocated completely, then I feel they won, and I refuse to be a victim. My therapist said that it will take time. Time to heal. Just be patient. Well, that's it. There isn't much to update, so this will probably be my last post. I want to thank everyone who posted on the last blog. All of your comments I took on board and fully appreciate. Update. I know it's been a while since my last post. I want to thank everyone who contacted me. I apologize for not getting back to you. Life has been crazy, but I hope you understand. A lot has happened, so it's only right that I give you the conclusion to the story. First, I want to clarify two things. One, I noticed in the comments that my story was fake, because I didn't think that the texts were proof. I knew my wife was setting, and my friend said that it was probably nothing. He meant this because he and others feel that s sexting is not cheating. I took his word for it. Plus. I didn't want to face what was going on. 2. The reason why I wanted feedback for meeting my wife is purely because I wanted validation that I did the right thing. As I said, I already met my wife, but wanted to and others in my social circle see if I did the right thing in your eyes. Sorry, I should have been more clear about that, as I said before. The story is complete for me, but I want to tell you the conclusion of it. So here it goes. After meeting my wife at the beach, my head was in bits as stated before. My wife is still trying to talk again but I'm still not processing everything that's happened. I still talk to my therapist. However, my wife is seeing a psychologist at the private hospital that her parents paid for. I found this out because I saw my wife's parents when I was hiking by myself. I was walking through the shallow stream, and I heard my name being called out. It was her parents. I was slightly worried about seeing them, especially after meeting with their daughter at the beach. I thought to myself, what did my wife tell them? Did she lie to them? Did she badmouth me, etc. It turns out she didn't at all. Her parents came over, and the mother hugged me. The father shook my hand. Both apologized for what happened, but I said they haven't anything to apologize for. My wife's mother suggested we find a bench and talk. I agreed. The mother started first. She told me that my wife has been committed to a psychologist. I've known my wife's parents for years. They have never lied to me. I've always found them genuine. Now they both stated what happened from their end with Margis. It turns out that not only was my wife a complete B to me, but to her parents as well. A little backstory. Before Margis, my wife loved drawing. She gets it through her mother. She, her mother, 
and others would have a drawing social group. My wife loved it. They did this for years. It made my wife happy. However, after meeting Margis, she stopped going. She didn't even give a reason. When my wife's mother called her, she got defensive and completely rude to her mother. She even swore. My wife never well, hardly swore. But this time she did. She would say, I don't give an SHT about the group. Or, it's sad and pathetic, like you, etc. My wife's parents said this wasn't isolated at all. They tried to talk to her about the behavior change, but all they got was abuse. At the time, they assumed it was because of me. In that we were having troubles. They didn't think it was because of an affair at all. It was only after I left that my wife also called her parents. Then everything made sense. After I went to Adam's, my wife went to her parents and laid everything out. The affair, what she did, what Margis made her do, etc. To them, it made sense, but they were disgusted as well. Her father went all in on my wife to the point that my wife had a panic attack. To them, hearing their daughter tell this story just didn't compute. This was their daughter. Not a person who cheats, lies, or abuses people. But this brought me back to my therapist, and her believing that my wife was being groomed by a sociopath. Me. My wife is a victim of a psychopath. Therapist. No, not a psychopath. A sociopath. Me. What's the difference? Before this, I'm ashamed to say I had no idea. Therapist. Psychopaths change their personalities to fit in their social circle. For example, if they meet someone who is happy and outgoing, they change into that person. Sociologists do not change. They make sure that the person they are closest to changes. They mold that person into a negative, vile person. Me. Okay, it does make sense. Therapist continues. Marges clearly was doing this with your wife. He made her talk to her parents in a disrespectful manner. He purposely chose people who defend Nazis for the videos. Me. How can someone have a hold over someone? Are you saying that my wife is a victim? Therapist. Yes, I know that sounds obtuse. But people with sociopathic tendencies are very influential. More importantly, extremely controlling. Back with my wife's parents. The mother was saying that she was seeing a psychologist. Her parents looked slightly strained, but at the same time relieved. Relieved that their daughter is getting help. A few weeks later, my wife's mother contacts me. During the past few weeks, I spoke with her often. She said that she agreed and wants me and her to talk and consult her sessions. Basically, my wife wants me and my mother to talk to her psychologist about what is happening. I ask myself, should I do this? I mean, it was agreed that my wife would sign the papers after the meeting. But something feels like, I'm not sure. Anyway, we agreed. After a few weeks of sessions, the psychologist spoke to me and my wife's mother. The wife is outside, waiting patiently. A bit like my therapist, she was blunt, but in a soft Irish accent. Psychologist speaking to us both. Your daughter has PTSD. Her relationship with Margis was abusive, grooming, and controlling. It has affected her from the start of the relationship with Margis. Me. She got with him in the first week. To me. That's hardly someone who is fighting for me. I said it abruptly and rudely. My wife's mother looked at me with a stern look of, shut up and let her finish. Psychologist. As I said, Margis had all the attributes of a perfect being. We all have them in our minds of what that being is. When Margis started at your wife's work, he was perfect. Not in just your wife's eyes, but others as well. I know this is hard she looks at me, but your wife was honest. He chose her. This perfect man chose her. Me. Um, okay, so she forgets she's married. Psychologist. She holds up her hand. I'm not saying what she did was right. Yes, it's true she found him attractive. However, his personality is not about manipulation with kindness. For under a year, he programmed her into thinking he's perfect, and looking at both of us you are not. Your wife was conditioned so intensively that she began to actually believe it. This is why she mentally abused you again looking at us both. This was him. After talking, we saw my wife in the lobby. She looked up at us both and smiled sheepishly. I looked at her, wanting to hate her. Wanting to make her suffer. Wanting revenge. But these emotions didn't come. Why? Time has passed. And there is something I need to do. I did it last year, and will do it every year. I go to where I need to go. I look at it and start to feel emotional. Daniel's grave. Daniel passed away a while back. At the funeral, I saw my wife not taking it well. As I said before, my wife and Daniel have known each other since they can remember. I remember Daniel speaking to my wife after the affair went public. 
My wife apologized for everything. Daniel forgives her. At the grave, I don't say anything. I just sit there in silence. That is, until I saw my wife there and sitting next to me. I look at her, and she cries. I've thought about shunning her countless times. Being cold to her, etc. But I couldn't. I knew that today wasn't about us, but Daniel. And so, for the first time in a long time, I hug my wife. Time passes. I'm still seeing a therapist, and my wife is still seeing the psychologist. I sit in the coffee shop, just looking out and seeing people. People looking happy it made me smile. Here's your cranberry juice, my wife said as she sat opposite me. We've been talking for a few weeks now. Nothing romantic, just getting to know her again. We meet again because my wife wants to tell me something. We agreed to meet by the lake. Now I'm wondering what it is. Is Marge's back? Is everything okay? I arrive first, and within five minutes she arrives. I immediately say, Is everything okay? She laughs and says everything is fine. She hands me a box. What is it? I said. Just open it, she said with a smile. I opened it, and it was a crest of my family. I looked at her with pleasant amusement. Happy anniversary, she said. After all this time, she remembered. She remembered that having family heirlooms is so important to me. But that wasn't all. She gave me another box. I opened this one. It was a photo album of us, us and Daniel, us and our families, us when we were happy. I was near breaking. She put her hand on my shoulder and said, This isn't a feeble attempt to win you back. I bought these because I know they're important to you, and so they're important to me. I know that there has been a lot of hurt. But I want you to know that I love you. I always have and always will. I look at her, not knowing what to do. But she leaves, still smiling. She always had a nice smile. I watch her walk away, and I smile. I'm walking along the beach. It's a beautiful day. I buy fish and chips, and me and my wife sit on rocks and watch the sea. We talk and talk. We talk about the day, our families, and friends. I often reflect on what happened back then. I never thought I would be eating with my wife after what happened. But I have to reflect. But reflect on what the psychologist said as well as my therapist. Psychologist. How do you feel? Me. What do you mean? Psychologist. About your wife. Me. I'm not sure. First, I wanted nothing to do with her. But as time has gone by, I feel more clear about things. Psychologist, things. Me. About my wife and Marges. Psychologist puts her arms on the table and leans towards me. There is no Marges anymore. Your wife got rid of him. Your wife has made no secret that she wants to reconcile. This has nothing to do with Marges now. It's about you. After months of seeing your wife, I can say that he will never be a threat again. She continued. I understand your skepticism. I do. But you wouldn't be doing this or meeting with her if you didn't still have feelings for her. The only question is, do you follow what you think is right? Or do you let him win? My therapist said the same thing at the time. For those eleven months, the pain was too much. However, they say time is a great healer. And for this time, I feel I have got to know my wife again. After we finish our food, we slowly walk along the beach, and I did something that I haven't done in a long time. I held her hand. She was in tears. I stopped and looked at her. For the first time in a long time, I saw my wife. Not the callous animal for those eleven months. I saw her. I saw the woman I loved. I saw the woman I love. And with that, I embraced my wife. Update. I've had many DMs and messages from people asking for an update. Like before, I want to thank everyone who replied and showed concern. However, I didn't realize Reddit was such a judgmental place. I have had people wish for me and my wife to receive terrible. I'm not typing their exact words thanks. I guess getting back together with my wife warranted terrible implications. But I do want to thank those who supported my decision. I also want to thank those who disagreed with me, but gave their constructive feedback. I thank you. So this is the final update from, wife had an affair. Should I meet her or ghost her? Now this will be the final post. But I will answer some questions some of you had. Well, as you know, I decided to reconcile with my wife. A decision I do not regret at all. I'm sorry if that upsets some of you, but it's my choice. Me and my wife are still together. She is still seeing her psychologist, but myself and my wife's mother are no longer in consultation. Not because my wife doesn't want us to, but because she is in the latter stages of therapy. Basically, in plain movie analogy, it's coming to an end. All that's left of us is my wife's closer sessions, which is still going ahead. As I said, I've had a lot of people asking about Marges. In my previous posts, 
I stated that he disappeared after the affair blew up. Well, I later found out that wasn't the case. He did in fact meet my wife when she was trying to get back with me. Now before anyone quickly judges, I need to explain exactly what happened. As stated, Marjus went off grid, but still tried to call my wife, text, FaceTime, and go over to the house, etc. He did this countless times. My wife blocked him on all forms of communication. This appeared to work for a while because Marjus went no contact. This was at a time when my wife was trying to build bridges with her family and me especially. Then one day, her phone was ringing an unknown caller. She answered. It was him. Marjus. My wife was with her mom, sister, and mom's friends. When everyone grasped that it was him, my wife put him on speaker. She didn't leave the room. She didn't try to hide. She spoke to Marjus in front of witnesses. I won't bore you with every little detail. But the conversation was Marjus wanting to meet. My wife agreed. Now again, before you judge, please read. There was a reason why my wife wanted to put him in speaker and to meet. Her psychologist said that if he ever tried to talk on the phone, put him on speaker. This way, she will have witnesses, but also support. To those that want to know about the conversation, it wasn't much. It was basically Marjus begging to meet. Now the reason my wife decided to meet was for herself. She wanted to meet him. Not for closer in a romantic sense, but to end that chapter. My wife decided on the time and place. She would meet Marjus at the Fountain Park. A place that would have a lot of people. Another thing my wife wanted was someone close in case anything happened. Marjus knows me. He knows what I look like. But he doesn't know her friend Bree and her boyfriend Tor. They will be there for support. In Sweden, Tor looked like the typical male Swede. A 6'4 Dolph Lundgren type. He was there to make sure nothing happened to her. Now some of you might be asking, why didn't your wife tell you about the meeting, etc.? Well, at the time, wife and Mill didn't want to jeopardize any chance of reconciliation. As stated, this wasn't a romantic meet. How do I know? Well, my wife recorded the conversation. And Bree and Tor were there, who I also know and trust. I won't bore you with every little detail of the meeting. I obviously listened to it all. But here are the main exertions. Bree and Tor are sitting on the next bench to wife and Marjus. Marjus. Hello, tried small talk. Wife. What do you want, Marjus? Marjus. Okay, well, I want you to explain yourself. Wife. Explain myself. Marjus. Yes. Please tell me after everything we have been through and everything I have done for you. That you abandoned us. Wife. That's easy because I didn't love you. I never did. I'm embarrassed and ashamed that I ruined my life for you. Marjus. Stop being dramatic. I gave you a life. A life that your husband never gave you. Did he? Did he treat you well? No, he didn't. No one did, except me. Christ, do you sound like a child now? You never gave me anything but shame. At the time, us was never us, was it? It was about my husband and family. Marjus. No, it was about you and me. No, it wasn't. You were obsessed with my husband and family. You wanted to know what my husband and family liked. But that wasn't the strange part. What was f ed up that you immediately said they were wrong? My husband was wrong with me. My family was wrong. But in truth, it was you that was wrong. Marjus. Right. Stop being childish. I don't recall you objecting to us. What I bought you. I remember you smiling and loving it. So just thank me. Wife. Thank you. Thank you for what exactly? That you got enjoyment from me disrespecting my husband. You got so much enjoyment from hearing me say that my husband was obviously in pain. But you didn't stop there. You made me say things to my husband and family that would hurt them. I didn't see it at the time. But you always wanted a report of what I said and did. Wife was losing composure. Marjus. Marjus laughs, I'm supposed to apologize for your husband being pathetic. Because he and your family were holding you back. That's the truth. I remember that you loved what she gave you. You smiled and embraced me. I made you realize that your circle was nothing more than a step. Now I'm prepared to forgive you, and we can actually make a life together. Wife. Wife laughs you're right. I did smile when I received the gifts. But I was never happy with you. You were brilliant at making me feel like you were the one. When in actual fact, you are a pathetic man. Why do you think I finished it when I saw the papers? Because there was no competition between my husband and you. My husband is a far better man than you. More than deserve. He is a nice, kind, genuine man. You are vile in every way. Marjus. You are an ungrateful woman, aren't you? 
Seriously? The weekend's away. Restaurants. Theaters I got you that. I got you to meet real people. I bettered you. I made you confident and assured. The way you're talking now to me is disrespectful. But you are not thinking straight. Oh, I am thinking straight. Probably the first time in a while. You want straight? All those things you did were superficial. I didn't see it then. But what kind of man supports white nationalism? What kind of man thinks it's a man's right to hit women for nothing? What kind of man tries to make a person not go to her best friend's funeral? The wife stopped to breathe. And she continued. You are not a man at all. Just a bully and coward. I am disgusted that I got involved with you. But I have to live with my mistakes. And that's what you are, Margis. A mistake. You can threaten me with releasing the videos and pictures. I don't care. There is nothing you can do to me that I haven't punished myself for. This will be the last time we see each other or speak. If you try to call me or try to contact me, I will call the police. Take this as your final warning. Goodbye. Wife stood up to walk. Margis tried to grab her. But Tor got in front of Margis. Margis looked at Tor and walked away. That was the last time she and everyone else saw him. I found out about this later on. Wife and Mill didn't want anything to jeopardize a possible reconciliation. Of course, when hearing this, my heart skipped. But hearing the story and speaking to Tor and Bree and Mill, I understand why my wife met him. The psychologist and my therapist said my wife wanted to take back control. Control from him. It's evident when speaking to my wife, psychologist, and family that she was submissive. Margis controlled everything that evolved around my wife. That meeting was the second time my wife took control back. Another frequent question I received is, what if another Margis comes along? Well, it's a question I asked myself a hundred times. But after everything and being on the path of reconciliation, I'm not going to give in. I chose this because I believe that my marriage is worth saving. I know that on Reddit I will get some abuse, but I'm sorry, I don't care. I do, however, love and appreciate the constructive feedback, whether it's support or disagreement. Of course this is a risk, but it's worth taking because I love her. I always have. For the first time in a while, I feel happy again. Me and my wife are doing the things we love. We are reconnecting with both our families. It's a journey. The last frequent question I get is, does your wife accept what she did? For my wife, it's going to be a long road ahead. She herself accepts full blame for what happened. If anyone says it's solely him, she will disagree fully as stated in replies in the last update. She still feels guilty, shamed, and sick. She is still in therapy and progressing. But as I said, it's a long road. A road that I, my wife, and our families are taking. I don't regret reconciliation at all. I get the trend on Reddit is about separating, scorched earth, vengeance, etc. I understand that. Trust me. But after the anger, pain, and hatred, everyone has to make a decision. Stay or leave. I decided to stay. Not because I'm a simp or a doormat, but because my marriage is worth fighting for. Thank you for reading and your feedback on all the updates. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.